I work with technology to improve education in some of the poorest schools in the world. And my work started five years ago in Senegal, West Africa. And you know, something that strikes me every time I'm there is how much people are talking on their mobile phones. They're talking, they're texting, they're talking, they're texting. I was on my way to visit a rural school about two hours' drive from the capital city of Dakar. Get in the car. I'm barraged by a small army of boys waving orange prepaid telephone calling cards. You know, they're, they're pressing them against the glass of my car, obscuring the view outside of women in their brightly colored dresses, selling mangoes and melons and cashews. We're driving about an hour and stop for lunch. Next to the restaurant, there's an internet cafe. And my people were standing on line outside the internet cafe just to wait to get their turn to go on the internet. Indeed, the continent of Africa is embracing mobile phones and the internet at a growth rate faster than any other continent on the earth. But I saw a problem. I visit a lot of schools. And whenever I go look at the school computer room, I see that it's empty. Or it's hardly being used up to its potential. And this is the opposite of what I saw on the streets. The technology, it was being used. It was being embraced. But the school technology, it was sitting there. So I made it my mission to change that, to work with schools to help their technology be used better and more effectively, because if schools in Senegal and the rest of Africa don't embrace technology, they will be locked out from a globalized world, and I'm afraid they'll never catch up. After lunch, we continued on our drive. About an hour, Outside of Dakar, the road starts to turn from pavement to dirt. And horse-drawn carts, well, there are more of them than cars on the road. We've got to stop for cows and goats crossing the road. The landscape is dry. And we're winding our way past large baobab trees and, and villages with thatched roof huts. And at the end of the road, is it called Sintio Ambaden? And this was the first school in Senegal that I started to work in five years ago, and also was my introduction to bringing technology into schools in Africa. The school was started with just 26 students and has reached an enrollment of nearly 250. And this is due to the dedication of the, the principal and the teaching staff and the community leaders. They have made this place a beacon of hope for the entire village. Look, the people in this community, they have to make an important choice. Are they going to send their children to the fields to earn money, to buy rice, to feed their families? Or are they going to send their children to school and invest in an education. I was inspired by students like Mom Diara on the left. Mom walks 45 minutes each way to attend school, and almost always on an empty stomach. And Diorka on the right, Diora is the first in her family to earn an education. And it's the story of these girls and so many boys and girls like them that really captured my heart. So I wanted to figure out how could I leverage my skills in technology and education to improve the school even more. But I saw problems with school computer rooms, and I wanted to get it right. Look. This is a school computer room that I've visited many, many times. It's not far from the village school. And 
Well, the last time I was there, the server was down, and the school principal was waiting weeks for a maintenance crew to show up. When I see students in the classroom, well, whatever learning that goes on there is entirely separate from any learning that goes on in their regular classrooms. And whatever technology skills they may happen to pick up, well, they'll be obsolete by the time these kids graduate. The other thing is power. This school is subject to constant power cuts. And while the power is cutting on and off, well, it's impossible to schedule computer time. And while this classroom sits empty, the ones next to it, well, they're in the dark. They're overcrowded. Look, here's a map of the world from space. Look at the continent of Africa. It's in the dark. In fact, 80% of rural sub-Saharan Africa does not have electricity. And the 20% that does, well, they're subject to constant power cuts on and off and on and off, all day long, sometimes several days in a row. So I took these observations back to the school and decided what I would do was donate 10 netbook computers. They could be charged quickly. They could be brought to people's homes with electricity. They could be moved between classrooms. Maybe that would do it. And I remember the first time I handed one to the school principal, and he held it up, and he said to me, Jim, you have no idea what having this computer means to us in the school. As, it, as if it would suddenly catapult the school into some higher level of learning that beyond all expectations. And you know, I had hoped it would, and so did all of the teachers. In fact, the teachers worked hard to learn the technology. They brought the computers, the netbooks, home in the evening to practice. We loaded software on the computers and correlated the software with the Senegalese national curriculum so it would be in sync. And the kids, well, kids just seem to be genetically wired to use technology. I don't know why, but they picked it up quickly and we were off and running with digital learning. But we ran into some problems. So many kids, a half a dozen boys here, crowded around a netbook, each trying to cram their hand in under the other just to get a chance to use the keyboard. The technology took over. The learning, all the learning content, content, it just seemed to be secondary. And we found the same happened in the classrooms. The teachers were going about teaching their lessons, and when the computers came in, learning stopped. So what could we do? Well, we thought, Let's just get more computers. Let's figure out how to get 20, 30, 40, 50 computers. Let's get one netbook for every child. Maybe that would work. But you know, we were positive this would just complicate things. These teachers, and this is a school with minimal resources, they couldn't afford a, a computer teacher or a maintenance person. They couldn't afford to manage a computer network. These teachers were there for teaching, and we couldn't get, let technology take over. It had to be about learning. So we had to find a better solution. Several days later, I was sitting on the veranda of the school, sipping tea with the teachers, and off to the side, there was a man sitting on a stoop. And he had his mobile phone in one hand and a portable radio with a bunch of memory slots in the other. And I watched as he skillfully transferred the memory card into the phone, I mean, into the radio. And I asked him what he was doing, and he explained that, well, he's used to listening to a lot of music on his mobile phone speaker. So he was transferring the memory card with all the music on it to the radio so that his mobile phone battery wouldn't die. 
in case he had to make a call or receive a call or do lots of texting. The man is a shepherd, a connected shepherd. (laughs) And I was inspired. Here, this complex technology was put to a simple, meaningful use. It was all about the shepherd's music. It wasn't about the megabytes. And so it should be with learning. Students and teachers, they shouldn't be focusing on the equipment. They should be focusing on the learning. That's what it's all about. So, it was back to the drawing board. What I had in mind was something like a 21st century school in a box. Something simple, compact, with tens of thousands of learning resources in it. Something that could work in any school, on or off the electric grid powered with a small solar panel. Something that could expand and work not just in a hundred schools, but in a thousand schools, because it would be simple enough. Well, (laughs) I went shopping, And here's what I came up with. Thanks a lot. The frame, it's made from common PVC pipe. The screen, it's a sheet of nylon, and it allows the light from a projector to shine through from the the rear. The students are in front. And while the whole thing is held together with bungee cords. It's held together with bungee cords. And in most schools, well, in the economically developed world, you know a projector is mounted on the ceiling of a classroom, right? Well, that won't work in a school like this, where you see the light just shining through a rusted roof. And, well, the whole setup can move easily from classroom to classroom over rocks and dust and dirt. And remember, it just takes one netbook, one low-power projector. And by the way, the screen, it's interactive. And the screen is interactive so that the students can be immersed in the learning. The interactivity is provided by a $45 Wii remote. I got the idea by watching a TED Talk. (laughs) The TED Talk was delivered by Johnny Chung Lee, a very, very creative software engineer. And the whole thing moves from classroom to classroom, impacting hundreds of students in a single day. This is a middle school teacher. She's teaching a science lesson. Now, the picture on the screen, well, that's of bacteria in a Petri dish. She got the the picture from a multimedia encyclopedia. The multimedia encyclopedia has thousands of resources, and we also taught her not to lecture. Instead of lecturing, she, we've taught her to teach the students to think critically. She would, instead of telling them about the bacteria, she would say, well, what is this? What is this object? What does it remind you of? Now, just imagine hundreds of teachers creating thousands of relevant localized, meaningful lessons for students, not only in Senegal, but throughout Africa. That's the potential. Now, I'd like to show you a video. Just like the shepherd focused on his music, you'll see that the students here, well, the students are focusing purely on the learning. 
This little boy is engaged in a math exercise. While the teacher sits on the side as the facilitator, as the coach of the learning process, and these little girls, well, they're involved in a sentence construction activity, and all of this is happening in schools with no library, no encyclopedia, no science equipment, and sometimes no books. Now they have access to tens of thousands of learning resources at their disposal. Multimedia encyclopedias, math, science, all sorts of learning resources. Well, we're expanding the 21st Century School in a Box program, and now it's in nine Senegalese schools. Our partners include the U.S. Agency for International Development, the Columbia University's Earth, Earth Institute, their Millennium Villages and Millennium Cities Initiative, and the Senegalese Ministry of Education. Isn't it something how we complicate our lives? It's actually harder to make life simple, isn't it? Isn't it? Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> we get so excited by the equipment that we lose sight of the learning. And this is what's happening in schools. We lose sight of the potential of technology in education. We lose sight of its meaning. We lose sight of the opportunities. When, in fact, it's just got to play as simple as the beat of hip-hop on the Shepherd's mobile phone. Thank you. Woo!